My name is Amar Jyot Singh. I am a licensed immigration consultant based in Edmonton, Alberta. I do a lot of applications, but currently I want to do applications for doctors, nurses, pharmacists, all the healthcare professionals. If you have minimum of three years experience, a good degree like a MBBS degree, MD degree, or any other, especially like a master's degree in your profession, with three years experience and good English, I can do your express entry application based on the point system you will qualify for immigration. The process may take about one year or so, but hey, you'll get uh, immigration with your family. And then once you are here, then you can choose any profession, including the one which you do right now, or you can choose some to do something else. But this is immigration to Canada. And after three years, uh, you can apply for Canadian passport. So uh, send me your resume. Uh, I'm looking to uh, see resumes from doctors, dentists, physiotherapists, psychotherapists, psychologists, uh, uh, nurses, uh, you know, pharmacists, uh, medical lab technicians, anybody who's working in a hospital is a good candidate to proceed. All right. Thank you very much and take care. What is your interest in healthcare profession? What are your questions? Absolutely, sir. So as we all know that we have this program, um, Express Entry. So I want to know, like, what occupations um, in healthcare professions would be ideal for this kind of program? What are their minimum requirements? Um, so if yeah. you could provide some information on that. Sure. So uh, most healthcare professionals are in short demand, on short supply here in Canada. You know, we have a, a shortage of uh, doctors, dentists, physiotherapists, nurses, uh, personal support worker, nursing assistant, uh, you know, people who are working in senior care, long-term care. We need all kinds of people. But just to focus on express entry right now, uh, just to be little simplistic in in uh, giving this option to people who are in India and in other countries. Uh, we are always looking for uh, uh, general, you know, um, people like dentists. We are looking for veterinarians, you know, people who have, a, like, you know, dealing with uh, veterinary medicine, uh, optometrists, audiologists, um, pharmacists, uh, psychologists, even chiropractors, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, nursing managers, registered nurses, GNM nurses, uh, opticians, the list is long. I mean, I mean, think of this, anybody who is working in a medical office, mm -hmm. uh, in a technical field, a medical office in a hospital, we need them. Even paramedical staffs, uh, people in India who, you know, do blood work, you know, medical lab technicians, yes, we need them as well. Uh, you know, um, medical radiation, x-ray diagnostic, uh, you know, medical sonographers, cardiology technologists, pharmacy technicians, massage uh, professionals, massage therapists, pretty much everybody. So the list is on and on. If you if you just want to feel who is the right ap applicant to, to qualify under these occupations, is just imagine you are in India or you are in some other country and you are working in a hospital. If you are working in a hospital, I can help you. Absolutely. That's perfect. Um, given the high competition rate in Canada right now and the high score for express entry, what would you suggest an ideal profile would look like for programs like this for healthcare professionals? Yeah, that's a good question. Because of the competition of uh, the global talent who's, who's uh, making profiles and the, you know, uh, the, the general stream is uh, going above 500, I, I can tell you that the, the best people who will have a good shot in, in being successful in the express entry is somebody who has at least a master's degree. If you don't have a master's degree, you are quite diminished, you are quite low. I mean, like, for example, MBBS degree is a good degree to start with as a medical professor because that's a terminal degree. I mean, otherwise, you know, you don't have to go to MD. But if you have a master's in, uh, in anything after your basic MBBS, wonderful. Uh, if you have a master of dental surgery, that's fine. If you have a master's pharmacy, that's wonderful. If you have a master's in uh, psychology, that's good. You know, any, anybody who has a master's degree and uh, equivalence, uh, you know, we have to do an ECA from Canada so that they, we find out whether the master's degree is equal or not. So anybody with a master's degree, anybody with, uh, uh, you know, at least a three to five years experience in that range. I mean, um, if you don't have experience, then it's, it's, but we need minimum one year, but the ideal is three years, four years. That's the ideal. Uh, number three is English. Uh, you got to speak English. You got to have good proficiency in English. We are looking at minimum CLB seven. The higher, the better. You know, maybe triple seven eight or even eight 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 something. The higher possible. You know, what you can go. 
uh, as far as how old you should be, uh, you know, we prefer somebody who is definitely less than 33, 34. You know, that, that is the ideal. I mean, if you are less than 30, then it's even wonderful. So between 25 and 34, that's the ideal age. So I've given you four. So one is the experience. The second is the education. Uh, third is the English language. And the fourth is the age profile. So we don't want, I mean, not like I don't want, the Canadian immigration system don't want people um, who are 50 years old or 40 years old or something. We want, of course, we want young blood, uh, young professionals who can come in and enter our workforce and get settled quickly. Um, and then touching again on the point of education and experience, what um, tools people can use to get their experience and their education verified? I know we have WES, so if you could talk a little bit more about how they can also prove what experience they have, number of hours they have, like what documents they can submit to prove that they have yeah. those experiences. Yeah. That's, a, that's a wonderful question. Now, if you are working, uh, if you're working on a salary, if you're working on a salary in a in wherever employer, you know, you 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 got to ensure that you get all your uh, resume, your work experience certificates uh, printed on their, you know, on their official letterhead, identifying the name of the employer, who they are, where they are, their contact number, email, fax, and something. Uh, who who is certifying this letter? Uh, that means who is the supervisor, HR manager, or somebody who is thing. So we need to see that letter as well. We need to see when did they start the work. And uh, till now, I mean, if they are working for one year or two years, we need to see the start date and the current date. Uh, what is the what is the job description? Like, what is the what what are the duties that you do? We need to have a complete description on of those. You know, uh, if you if you started as a junior doctor, and you know, what was the job description then? If you are, what are the job description now? What do you do on a daily basis? Those things. And last but not the least, your total salary. How much salary you make? Uh, you know, per month or per hour or per week or something. Uh, at the end of the day, in the express entry, we are concerned about hours. How many hours were you working every week so that we can cumulatively add on to all the number of hours and then show that in a certain period that you have total number of hours. So if you can, I know in some countries they don't have hourly, but if you can, you know, just kind of get some uh, uh, evidentiary proof on how many hours did you actually work in a certain week that could be much helpful and smooth going forward. So that's all we need. Absolutely. And so if you could also touch base on uh, how much time does the whole process take? What does it cost? Yeah, so uh, so this is express entry and possible nomination to different provinces. If you make your express entry and if you get nominated from the province, that does speeds up a little, a little bit or so. But Give or take your profile is valid for 12 months. So, you know, don't be in a hurry. I mean, it will, it will take 12 months in that range, 12 months or 15 months, depending on what the other issues are, maybe admissibility issues or verification of your documents, information issues. Maybe you had a previous refusal of some visa, uh, the Canada visa in the past or something, uh, based on if you have a medical problem in your family or something. There could be so many issues that can impact the, the, the length of the outcome, you know, how it concludes. But, you know, I'm thinking between 12 to 15 months in that range. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, and then just last question. So if someone applies into this program and gets their PR, what their future could look like in Canada um, in the coming years? Like what could what could like how could they? Um, bring their certifications and like possibly practice here or go into another occupation. Yeah, so uh, so that's that's a very uh, good and practical uh, aspect of immigrating to Canada. Now, if you are a licensed, uh, uh, you know, doctor, uh, you know, regulated in India or some other countries, uh, the the challenge is to if you want to practice your med med uh, medicine here, you have to qualify for the for the provincial examinations wherever you go. You go to British BC or Alberta or Ontario, wherever you go. You have to register with the licensing body here and challenge the examination and pass all the missing credits. Maybe you are missing a lot of subjects or something. They evaluate and everything. The it is expensive, of course. So, you know, uh, uh, it's not not something that I control. But the bodies have their own fees, and you have to go through the hoops to qualify. So if you can, uh, if you can, uh, if you can start that process while you are in your country in advance, I think that could be wonderful. You are you will jump ahead in the queue uh, just to get started, but you have to go to their website to uh, to see you know how you can do. I know BC has an active uh, uh, 
uh, physician search uh, website, which I, I can look it up right now, which I, I don't remember, but you have to go to their licensing body of their province and maybe you want to live in Nova Scotia. Maybe perhaps you have some relatives in Manitoba. So you have to go to their, uh, the provincial body of the licensing body of the doctors in Manitoba and find out how to apply and get started. Uh, they will see your, uh, you know, entire transcripts and decrees and work experience, and then they will advise you further. Uh, what are what are you missing? And then you can uh, follow up on this. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can help uh, them in this process. They have to do this on their own. But the yeah. immigration process is independent of that licensing process. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So just to wrap up on this program, um, if you have any more advice on this particular program and how people should get in touch with you if they want to get their resume evaluated, um, if you could just touch base on that. Yeah, so I will uh, post below uh, email address uh, dedicated to this stream uh, on which uh, anybody who's interested to apply for express entry, they, they sure should uh, send me their complete CV or resume with the minimum information on how much experience do you have, uh, what is the uh, title of the job that you're working right now, what is your degree, um, uh, have you taken an English test before, or have you traveled to America or Canada before so that we can see a travel history uh, to, to weed out any potential problems in the future entry, uh, who's in your family, maybe you have relatives here, maybe your spouse is also qualified in a different category in occupation, so we need that comprehensive information to do a preliminary assessment and then uh, you know our team will uh, do a detailed assessment and like a short uh, questionnaire interview with uh, with the applicant to see um, if everything is looks looking okay or maybe there are some potential you know dangers or risk lurking behind the screen so that they you know we don't want to be surprised later on so we need your resume uh, or cv to be sent uh, at the first instance okay Thank you so much for your time today, sir. It was very helpful information. And hopefully people who are interested will reach out to you for more information and if they have any questions. Um, so I really want to thank you for your time today for coming on the call with me. That's right. Before before I let you go, I, I just want to read out some occupations. I've made a list of occupations. Uh, okay. These occupations are primed to be successful to in express entry. And uh, I just want uh, want people to understand that even though nobody talked to you about these occupations, but we still welcome you to apply for express entry. Let me just read out some some sure. uh, things that people will be surprised that even they are required. Uh, and then you know, what about look at uh, massage professions? There are so many massage therapists in India and other countries. They had no idea that they are needed in Canada, but we need massage therapists. So if you are a massage therapist with a degree in massage or at least a diploma or something, whatever your your licensing body has required in the country, we need you. Uh, we need dental assistant, not, not only the dentist, but even the dental assistant who are working under the full dentist and they're helping out, you know, cleaning and stuff. We need them as well. We need nursing assistant, you know, people who are junior to nurses, they have maybe a diploma or GNM or three-year diploma or something. They are working in a, as a assistant to a nurse. We need them as well. Uh, I already talked about uh, medical lab assistant, people who are working in a blood labs, for example. Uh, we need them as well. Uh, I've already talked about dental hygienists. I've talked about uh, veterinarians. We need them, you know, people who are working in an optical clinic. You know, when you go to a shop, they make glasses for you. And they are, uh, the, there's a main guy called optician and there are other assistants working under him. They're called optical assistants. They help you, you know, uh, make the frames and take orders and stuff. We need them as well. We need chiropractors. We need dietitians and nutritionists, you know, dietitians who plan your diets. We need them big time. Uh, and so I, as you as you see, the, the the scope of the medical field and health field is quite, quite broad. Yeah. Just my, my single formula is if you are working in a hospital or in a medical office or any kind of health setting, it is very likely that you are in demand in Canada. That's that's great to hear. There's there's lots of options for people who are interested to apply. Um, yeah, yeah. Right, I want to thank you so much again for your time today. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.